Hello everyone, with this week being Tinley Week, we wanted to bring you a list of questions that you should probably ask when you're buying a ball python. A lot of these questions you can ask in person at a show like Tinley, but you should also be asking these questions if you're purchasing online, probably a few more as well. Make sure that before you start asking questions specifically about an animal that you are actually interested in the animal. I know this sounds very commonplace, but some people get a lot of social anxiety and they might just start asking questions about an animal almost like they're on a script because they're nervous and it's fine to be nervous, but don't pull their chain because some of these shows are awfully big and you're dividing the attention of the breeder so it could pull them away from another potential sale. If another potential buyer sees that that breeder is busy and talking to someone, they might move on and think, well, I'll come back to them. Well, they might never make their way back to that area or they might just completely forget and they might see another animal that they purchase instead and now they no longer have the ability to get the animal that they might have gotten from that breeder. So it's fine to have a conversation with people, but just be polite and considerate of other people that might be around the table. If they're very, very busy, they probably are going to want to talk to prospective buyers. But by all means, if you have questions to ask them about a specific animal that you want to purchase on their table, take their time because that is what they're there for. In my opinion, it's important to have a bit of a conversation first, get to know the person that you're buying it from to at least a small extent. A lot of the questions that you'll be asking are probably going to be around eating. So first question you should ask is what are they eating? So is it rat? Is it mouse? Is it African softbird? You want to make sure that you are able to provide that. Now there's nothing saying that you can't try and switch them to another prey item, but usually with that there is some challenge. There is always a challenge when you first get a new animal home. Getting it on eating typically it takes a little bit of time. Some of them are great right off the bat, but you should never expect that. So therefore you kind of want to at least know what they were eating so that way if they don't switch for you, you can go back to what they were eating. The next question to ask would be whether it's frozen thawed or live. This is even bigger in my opinion because a lot of snakes will prefer live at first, at least in my experience. You can get animals to frozen thawed, but, and this is a big but, I always tell everyone this and I want them to understand, I would rather walk a sale and have someone not understand this. They aren't all going to transition to frozen thawed and even when they do, they could detransition. And I think that anyone that purchases a snake should be prepared for this. On that the next question to ask would be when did they last eat? Did they eat that week? A lot of breeders will skip a week before bringing them because it can be a little stressful and you certainly don't want a regurgitation. So don't worry if they hadn't eaten that prior week, but you want to make sure that it's not been a very, very long time since they last ate. The next question you'd want to ask is how frequently they are eating. This might be the most important one because you want to develop consistent feeding behavior. That it'll be one of your top objectives when you get your animal home. So if you already have a track record of them consistently eating, that's a great sign that they'll keep going for you and that if they aren't going you probably just need to leave them alone for a little bit and they'll probably go as long as your husbandry is good within no time. Another question that you'd want to ask would be how they are keeping the ball python. Were they keeping them in tubs or in tanks? Most breeders are going to say tubs. This is important because if you transition them to a tank, that is going to be a bigger transition. Suddenly the world will go from a cave where they feel safe to a little bit more open of a world. But how you keep them in terms of that will be important because if you put them into a tank, they're going to have a little bit more of a different time adjusting if they were coming from a tub and Possibly vice versa as well. If they were going from a tank to a tub, they just might need some getting used to things. We've done some videos on how to do a setup, which we very basically cover the tank setup in that as well. But in my opinion, in that case, you should probably try to block out three of the sides for the ball pythons. You could even get some car tint from like an auto store and put it on three of the sides. So therefore there's only an open side in the front and on the top, this will provide a lot of security for your animal as well as some hides in there so that they can go there when they're feeling too stressed out and they don't want to deal with the world. Also ask what substrate they were on. That's important as well. If they were on paper and you're putting them on cocoa husk, that sometimes can affect the animal. I don't find this one too often to be true, but if they aren't eating after a while, you could try to re-emulate the environment that they came from to give them some comfort because ball pythons are very habit forming creatures. The next question to ask, which isn't quite as important if you forgot, but you know, especially as a breeder, you want to know when they were born. And even as a pet buyer, you want to be able to celebrate their birthday maybe. Now don't expect a breeder to always know the exact date that they were born, but the month I would imagine they should, or at least the season, but honestly, they should probably keep their records at least to know the month. A lot of that is actually asking for reasons of making sure that they produce the animal themselves. And if they didn't, that's okay. As long as you know that and you're okay with that. 
Another important question I would ask, especially as a breeder, is what the pairing was. And what I mean by that is the genetics involved. Say, you buy this from me, and I say, the pairing was a chocolate yellow belly clown to a spot nose clown. And that yellow belly, I said, no, it's not. What you got here is a chocolate clown. Let's say three years down the road, you breed this to a yellow belly, black pastel, orange dream clown, and you get a white snake. Well, if you did not ask the pairing, you might be very, very confused. If you did ask the pairing, you would know then that this animal that you bought actually had yellow belly in it. Yellow belly can be a hard one to find. So sometimes you need to ask the questions to see if there were any underlying genes. So that way you're not as confused when something happens. And also you might make different decisions. Another question to potentially ask would be, did you produce the animal yourself? Most of the time this is the case, but not always. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. A lot of people do buy and resell animals as wholesale. Any pet store you go to for the most part isn't producing these animals themselves. It's not necessarily a bad thing when you go to a show and someone says they didn't produce it themselves. But then you might have a few more questions for them. Who did? Where did you get this? What questions did they maybe ask? And hopefully they know so long as they can provide the information needed and the animals eating properly, then you should be in the clear. But I think it's an important question to ask as well. Another question would be their temperament. Again, an optional question I would say, and not one that you should really be concerned about if you're a breeder, but as a pet owner, this question probably does. Keep in mind that temperament could change for the better or the worse. They do have personalities, and despite what people might say, but a lot of their temperament is controlled by the way they're being kept. If they're stressed out too much, they are going to be ornery and angry. Sometimes the breeder as a huge breeder might not know the exact temperament of the animal, but if you are a pet buyer, it's not a bad question to necessarily ask, but as a breeder, I don't see any purpose of this question. Another question that you'd want to ask, and this is entering level of, I've decided to buy this animal. Then maybe say, could I hold the animal? I have no problem having people hold my animals, but some people do, and they're not trying to be jerks. There are diseases and mites that could be spread. They're trying to watch out for their animals. So don't expect it. Only ask it if you're going to buy the animal. Now, while you're holding this animal, you are doing a very basic health check. That should be the purpose of it. What you're looking for are any external signs of injury, illness, mites, such like that. It's a very quick once over. Don't sit there and look at it like you're trying to check for a fraudulent bill. It's a little insulting. At the same time, you do need to look at it. If you do find something of note, calmly and discreetly talk to the breeder and mention it. And then you kind of need to make a decision whether you want to walk from that sale or continue. But again, this is only a question that you should ask if you are going to proceed with the sale, barring any discoveries, so to speak. Another question that you can ask is could you sex the snake? Some people might not be able to provide that, especially an adult snake. And they might not just bring probes or be comfortable being able to probe. Probing is not an inherently a dangerous thing to the animal, but it can be. If done improperly, you could kill the animal or render it infertile. So in a show environment, when you've got a bunch of stuff going on, that might not necessarily be the easiest place. So don't 100% expect this, but if it a big breeder should guarantee the sex, but it is a valid question that you can ask if you are going to proceed with buying the snake. Do not ask this question if you are going to not buy it. And another question that you can ask if you are very serious about purchasing the animal is the price. You can ask to haggle the price, unless you see something on there that says absolutely firm price, but offer a fair price. Don't expect ridiculous amounts like 50% off for cry. Typically on the last day of shows like of Tinley, you can maybe get a little more bold, but I would say never beyond 25%. You don't want to insult them and you could just shut down all negotiations right there if you give a ludicrous offer. On other days, I think it's acceptable to possibly at least ask for 10, maybe 15% off, unless it says firm price. And be expected to be told, no, nah, I'm pretty firm on this. I've had it swing both ways. And if you're serious about the animal, 10 to 15% off shouldn't make or break you anyways. But don't ask that question unless you're serious about buying it. When people start asking me about pricing and what I would do, I expect it to kind of happen. So a lot of breeders are going to expect that. So if you say, oh, can you do this? And then you go, okay, well, I'm gonna walk over here and go talk to this guy, see if he'll match that. People are not gonna be very happy about that, so to speak. So don't waste their time. Only ask this question if you're going to buy. Now, I wanted to cover a couple more things when it comes to buying online. All these questions are valid, other than maybe holding it, obviously. But there are actually a few more things that I would probably recommend asking when you get very serious about purchasing online. First, I wanted to talk about where you should buy online. And the easiest answer to that is buy on Morph Market. There are other sites out there, like kingsnake.com is one of the more original ones. Craigslist is certainly an option. However, they come with their own set of risks as well. But I'm referring to paying people 
and sending money online, not meeting them necessarily. And I think Morph Market is the best place to do this. You can do your research on the breeder right there, but I think it's important that you talk to them and that could be very via text or communication via email. Don't just say, I'm gonna buy this snake and then send money. Ask all the questions that you need, but possibly online, you might wanna see some more pictures. And one of the biggest reasons you wanna ask for pictures is so that they can provide new pictures of this animal that they didn't necessarily post. Scammers aren't going to be able to do this because they don't have the animal. And you're gonna wanna compare them, realizing that lighting could be very different. When they're taking pictures of their animals to put on their Morph Market pages, they're almost like photo shoots. When I do it, we put them in a little photo box and it really makes their colors shine. When I'm asked to take pictures for someone else that are different, I'm probably just doing it with my phone. What you're gonna wanna more or less do is check for pattern things, maybe in the face or in certain parts of the animal to make sure that it's essentially the same. You could also put this into Google image search. This is a tip I actually learned from Olympus Reptiles. You could put it in there and do kind of a reverse search and you're basically looking for a stock image or someone else's animal. Make sure that they're not just using pictures that they found on Google. Keep in mind, pictures are not necessarily easy things to do for breeders. They have a lot to do, especially if they're bigger. So taking a picture is a little bit more of a commitment and is not something you should do unless you're going to buy the animal unless some red flags go up. And that would be the basic questions that I would ask if I were purchasing a ball python. You don't necessarily have to ask every one of these questions. Obviously, there are certain exceptions. There are also certain breeders that I would honestly say are exempt from certain questions. If their reputation precedes them, let their reputation speak for itself. That's not to say buy blindly. You should still buy with intelligence. But certain things, if you're buying on Morph Market from a very well-known breeder, I don't think you need to ask for pictures. If you like this video, you can actually check out our most recent video right here. Hope to see you at Tinley.